Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you've reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is Sunday, December 3rd. It is my floss tube number 218. And I would like to say welcome. If this is your first time finding my channel, um, I hope you like what you see, want to hit like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. And if you are one of my returning viewers, I just noticed you can't see my stuff over here because of my books. Does that help? Maybe a little bit. Um, <laughs> if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending this time with me. Um, it means so much to have you here each week watching my videos and um, commenting and being a part of my community, joining my Zooms. Um, it is just such a wonderful um, uh, part of my life, and I thank you so much. Um, today is a D and D day, which means I have to get everything done and started on the upload in the next hour or so. Um, it's nine o'clock in the morning, um, and D and D starts at eleven. So. Um, for those of you that watch me for a while, you know that um, for a couple years now, I've been playing D&D uh, &D with my brother and my, was my niece and nephew, but my niece has gotten extremely busy with her competitive cheerleading. Um, they moved to Michigan at the, uh, the middle of last year in June-ish, and she's with a new cheer gym, which is competitive cheerleading is even a very, a much bigger deal in the Midwest than it was out in California. So... Um, yeah, her cheer responsibilities have gotten um, very large, so she is no longer playing the D&D, &D. Um, although her character is still part of the game, so if she wants to stop in at some point, then she can play. So I kind of help play her character to keep everything going, but um, uh, now I'm playing with my brother and my nephew and a friend of my nephew's online on Zoom, and we do it about once a month. Um, so that's a fun little thing to do, and today is the day. Um, so, um, last week uh, I had a Zoom, a Stitchy Zoom meetup, which was very fun. Um, there were some people on there that haven't been on for a while, and um, we had some good discussions, some, some casual discussions and some intense discussions, and it was all actually really very enjoyable. Um, for those of you that have never joined the Zoom, please do. It's very casual. It's very, um, if you don't want to talk, you don't have to talk. If you don't want to have your camera on, you don't have to have a camera on. If you do want to jump into the discussion, everybody is super welcoming and kind. And it's really just a, nothing more than a stitchy get together. It's just like going to a Panera and sitting there stitching and talking, except we're on Zoom. Um, I'm going to have two more this month. I'm going to have one on um, Saturday the 16th at 4 p.m. And then um, I did this last year too. And for me, it turned out great. And I I, I am going to do a New Year's Eve Zoom. So um, I'm going to start it at 8 p.m. my time, which will be what, 11 for, for East Coast people. And um, last year I stayed on until about 12.30 my time. And we had a great time and um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was totally fun to stitch and all of us stitching on our new year, new start kind of thing. Um, I usually do my new year, new start on New Year's Eve. Um, and yeah, so um, that's going to be happening again this year. So I would love it if anybody can join, um, you know, if you want to stop in and then leave, you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, I was really worried last year I would have nobody on with me, but actually we had a nice little crowd and it was it was really, really fun. So I do encourage any of you who aren't doing anything else on New Year's Eve. Um, now I understand there's a lot of parties, so there's a lot of hanging out and doing stuff. For me, um, I don't wanna go out on New Year's Eve. Um, too many weirdos out there, you know, I, to me it's a, it's a time to be at home. Even if you're drinking your champagne or your martinis or whatever, you should be doing it at home. Um, so anyway, that, uh, that is what is going to be happening zoom wise this coming month. So put it on your calendar, please. All of the information is down below. Actually, I, I set up the zoom to be now a recurring sort of meeting, which means I don't have to change 
the codes and the numbers. So it basically is the same number. Um, oh, my light just went out. Hold on just a second. Let's see if we can get that back. Okay, sorry about that. Oh goodness. Now everything's sliding everywhere. I'm a very professional YouTuber here, people. Okay. I was talking about the Zooms, right? Yeah, so put them on your calendar. Information is in the description box to get on. <laughs> and um, hope to see you there. All right, um, let's see what else happened this week that you might be interested in. Oh, <laughs> I've spent the weekend basically being ill, sick, whatever. Um, I had my vaccine, my booster vaccine on uh, Thursday and my flu shot. Um, I didn't think I was gonna have a reaction because I didn't last year, like the first three times I had COVID vaccine, I did have a reaction. Um, a reaction being fever and, you know, achy, like the flu. Um, but then last year I had like three vaccine, four vaccines at once. I had, um, I had the COVID, I had the flu shot, I had the pneumococcal pneumonia and shingles. I had it all done on the same, at the same time. And I had no reaction other than like a sore arm and stuff. Um, so I thought this year I was golden. I didn't think there was going to be a problem, but of course they reformulate these things every year. So, um, so I had my shot on Thursday. I had to leave work just a little bit early to go get it. And I came home, you know, I was tired, normal stuff, but I was like, Oh, I'm good. I'm not having any reaction. Um, no fever. Fever is like the first thing that, you know, clues me in. And I went to bed and in the middle of the night, I, first of all, I slept terribly. And in the middle of the night, I'm like, I have a fever, you know? So um, I woke up Friday and, you know, I, I let them know at work I wasn't going to be coming in because I'm like, I'm aching all over. Um, I'm running a temperature. And so Friday basically was spent in bed, sleeping off and on. Um, I had, my fever went up to almost 102 and um, felt pretty crappy. It kind of went away. The fever went away around, I'm looking at the cord for my my thing it's i'm afraid it's gonna go out again <laughs> but if it does it does um the fever broke around like nine ten o'clock at night and i got a really good night's sleep then yesterday um i tried to get a little bit of stuff done around the house nothing too strenuous you know um but i was trying to set up for my Fostica videos next week and so I had to clean the counter that I'm going to be using and try and set stuff up and hopefully filming is in a tiny little area. It feels a lot smaller than I thought it was going to but we'll see how it works you know. Um, but I did a little bit of stuff and every time I moved around then I would feel kind of you know that and my fever would go up a little bit. So I was running a temperature last night. Um, I also sometimes, you know, we do things and it's just like, how can we be so stupid? So I basically, <laughs> I overdosed myself last night on my insulin. I am a type two diabetic and I do take insulin. Um, I don't take a huge amount, but I take it morning and night because, um, when I first started taking it, the doctor and the nurse practitioner decided that that was the best way for me to keep it because it's a it's a slow releasing sort of in, insulin and for it to still kind of be in my system late in the afternoon they want me to take my you know bigger dose at night before I go to bed and then kind of like a booster dose in the morning so you know over the years you know it's adjusted a little bit and right now I'm taking um, like 51 units at night 
and like 25, 28 units in the morning. And when I, when I add my insulin to the 51, because I was just over the summer, I was, I was, my numbers were a little bit high in the morning and I've found that when that happens, then I just need to adjust it up a couple units. Well, my syringes are 50, 50 unit syringes. So I started kind of doing like a double shot at night. I do like 40 units and then 11 units. Um, and just give myself two shots because, um, I mean, I suppose I could get bigger syringes, but whatever. So last night when I went to go take my medicine, I did the 40 units and then my brain was <laughs> not working. And instead of giving myself an additional 11 units, I gave myself the 28 units for the morning, which is, you know, I don't know. I mean, and I'm like looking it up, like, what if you give yourself a, an overdose of insulin and so basically it was saying like, you know, you have to monitor yourself, monitor your blood sugar. If it goes down too low, you need to, you know, drink some juice or, you know, eat a piece of bread or, you know, whatever it is that's going to get your numbers back up. So I was extremely paranoid. I'm like, oh, great. I'm not going to be able to sleep, whatever. But I had just eaten a snack. Well, like an hour or so before. And it was a decent snack. I had a pomegranate and I had a piece of toast. But my insulin was, I mean, my... My blood sugars were actually really high because I was also running a temperature, which pops your, your numbers up. So I kind of figured it was going to kind of counteract the fact that I've been sick or had a fever for the last couple of days, which makes my blood sugar go really high. Taking the extra insulin wasn't going to be a huge problem, but I had my little glucose tablets in case I woke up in the middle of the night. That's only happened to me twice where I've had like a really low blood sugar incident. Um, but I have the glucose tablets just in case because it's pretty scary when that happens. Um... <laughs> And I went to sleep. I slept pretty well. I woke up this morning and my blood sugar was a little low, um, but not like dangerously so. It was just kind of on the bottom edge of where it actually should be, but it never really is that low in the morning. So I had a little protein smoothie and now I'm good. But, um, I, you know, probably I didn't take my insulin this morning because um, I figured, you know, so I might need to adjust later in the day, whatever. <laughs> So anyway, I got myself all messed up, <laughs> which is um, part for the course, I guess. So anyway, it's been not as productive a weekend as I would hope because I've spent a lot of time not feeling well. And I'm going to kind of try and take it easy today too. I don't know if I have a fever right now. I feel because I'm up and moving and I haven't been doing that for the last couple of days. I'm feeling a little bit sweaty, but I don't know if it's just sweaty or if it's I got a little low grade fever. Um, I know that the reaction to the boosters only lasts like two days or so. And, um, you know, as my friend said, it's good to actually, the reaction means that your body is getting those antibodies in there, which is good. Cause as most of you know, I had COVID over the summer. Um, I have no idea where I got it because I am, <laughs> I'm a hermit. I don't really <laughs> interact with anybody except for maybe three people and none of them got it. Um, so I have no idea how I got it or where I got it, but it was certainly not fun. And um, if I can have the booster to prevent me, either prevent me from getting it or for prevent me from having it in any uh, extreme way, totally worth it to kind of not feel off for a day and a half. Um, okay, I think that that's about it as far as my preamble, warning to you about how I didn't feel good on Friday. Um, but let us get going with the stuff I have to show you. So I worked on my latch hook rug this week, but I'm not going to pull it out of the bag to show you because, you know, I worked on like, I got that much more done. Um, I don't know that it's actually worth it to show you the progress each time. I have, let's see, I got about that much done this week and I have about that much left to go. So I'm hoping I can get that done before the end of the year. That would be really nice. Um, I did look online on how to finish um, a latch hook. Um, I think I'm going to just do like a binding. I looked up, you know, I saw a video on how to do the binding around the edge. Um, and then because I think I am going to be using it as a rug of sorts, um, I'm going to get a pad to put under it, not to hook to it, although I might just tack it, but you know, one of those pads that'll keep it from slipping around. And then, um, I 
think I'll put it in sort of my living room, <laughs> my tiny little apartment. Um, Baggy likes to stretch out on that little area, so he might like to stretch out on the, the rug, which means, of course, it's going to get black cat hair on it, but hopefully it'll be semi-vacuumable. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, so I did work on that. I also did a lot of work on my little golden books. Um, so every day, well, I shouldn't say every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, maybe, or Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. I don't know. Um, I, uh, sew the signatures into two books each night. Um, I gotta tell you guys, if I've shown you before making the spines and, and, um, having the, the idea after doing, you know, five books or so to pre punch the holes in the spines. That was like the smartest thing I ever did because it, it makes that sewing the signatures, which is not easy already, but it makes it so much better. Like I can't even believe that I did it before without having those holes punched in it. Um, but, um, yeah, so I did that, um, hard on hands, you know, it was a difficult hand week. And then, um, was it yesterday um, or Friday? I don't think it was Friday because I just wasn't doing anything Friday. But yesterday morning, I um, I worked on six or seven of the books. And I I basically uh, punched all the corners. I like rounded all the corners. I have little decorative punches. And basically, basically you're like rounding the corners with them so it just, it just makes everything look better to have these like finished edges what the heck okay wonderful disaster all right i guess i have a little bit to clean up when i'm done with this video um so speaking of the little golden books wow i'm scattered today um i I'm going to have, now hopefully the little golden books that I'm making, the ones that are for my Floss Nicker last year, the nine books, or actually 12 books because I have three for my friends. All right, can I please not have everything flying everywhere? Um, they're hopefully going to be all done and mailed by the end of the year. Not good. Um, I'm hoping, I'm trying. Um, if not, then they will get done in January. But regardless... Um, in addition to those books, I also have made two, um, I have a couple more, but I don't think those are going to get done, but I have two holiday books. They're, they're, they're Christmas books. So it's kind of ironic. I'm giving them away during plastic videos, but, um, I have these two books that I'm going to give away during my plastic videos this year. So the two that I have are, uh, 101 Dalmatian Snow Puppies, and this is a holiday one. Um, it's all wintry and it doesn't have any, uh, you know, any of the tucks or any of the, any of the decorations yet. It, this is basically just the basic plain pages, but, um, we have this one, I don't want Dalmatian snow puppies. And then I have, uh, Disney's make these a Christmas carol. So I'm going to give these away during my Flastica videos, and this is how I'm going to do it. Um, so I think I'm going to just gather all of the, uh, gather comments, gather entries, if you want to call them that, um, during the first seven days, and then on eighth day, I'll, I will pull uh, a name. Um, so you can enter every day. Um, I think what I'm going to do each day is give like a code word to put into your um, comment to make sure that I know that you're trying to get the books. Um, and, um, and also because, you know, I would like it if people would actually watch the videos. <laughs> I mean, I don't want you to just go in and comment. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to give a, a code word, um, for you to put in your comments and then I'll gather all of the comments. And then on the last day I will draw the names and, and give away these two books and hopefully by the eighth day they will be finished. But you know, um, 
as I said, they're all, the signatures are all in there. They have all their pages and all of their, you know, and they're sewn, but there's nothing, none of the, like the stuff that makes it really frou-frou and exciting is in here yet, but they're really cute books. And as, um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but if you've watched my channel, when I make my golden book journals, um, the entire book is in here. So it is still a book that you can read and enjoy. All of the pages are in here. They're just surrounded by lots of fun other stuff. So that is something to look forward to starting next week because Hanukkah, it starts Thursday night. So anyway, if you're interested in, um, in getting one of those two books, then please watch my videos and put your name in, make a comment. Okay. So on to my stitching this week. Um, come on. All right. Um, I do have a new start. That's why I'm having to pull this up because my new start is basically um, inspired by two people, <laughs> Jen, Backcountry Stitcher, um, because we were talking on the Zoom and we were talking about Hanukkah, we were talking about the situation in the world and how, you know, we feel and how we feel about, you know, we were talking about me doing Floss Flossnika videos and do I feel safe doing them and um, you know, we were talking about putting up decorations and, you know, just all of that stuff that, that people are having to think about right now, Jews, I should say, um, because there's a lot of anti-Semitism, to be quite honest, that is kind of running rampant in the country right now. Um, and, uh, it's a little scary. Um, but anyway, we were talking about that. And of course we were talking about Hanukkah stitching and how, you know, there's a, very, uh, there's a lack of good Hanukkah patterns. Um, unfortunately, and, and I know you guys are going to like, oh, but try this person, but try that person. Um, the reality is, is that there isn't very much and it's all very similar. And the people who do it and put out a pattern, everybody gets all, oh, they did a pattern. Um, they did a menorah, they did a Jewish star and they're all very, very similar. Um, and to be quite honest, I'm not super impressed. I'm not super interested in stitching that stuff. Occasionally you come across something that's fantastic and different. Um, but, um, you know, there's just not a lot. Um, as I said, and this is one of the first things I talked about on my channel when I first started it and it is different now. It's a little bit better now. It is. But when I first started my channel, I went and looked and on one, two, three stitch, you know, you can look at patterns. Um, by category. And at that time, this was 2019. And as I said, it is better now, but I don't have the numbers for now. Um, but back in 2019, um, when I looked, there was something like 11,000 Christmas patterns and there was like eight Hanukkah patterns, <laughs> um, in the cross stitch pattern section. So, I mean, that kind of just gives you an idea of, um, you know, what we're talking about. So anyway, I was talking to Jen and she's like, yeah, but you know, she goes, didn't I send you those um, those cat patterns and she did last year, um, there was a, there's a site on Etsy and it has like three or four really cute, like black cat, you know, holding a dreidel and with the menorah. And I did get those, but, um, after talking to Jen, I, um, I was on Etsy and I just, I think I put in cute Hanukkah pattern or something again, not very much came up. Um, but one thing that did come up was this one that I'm going to show you and this, in addition to talking to Jen, was inspired a little bit by Laura stitching the shore because she has a bunch of these gnomes and they're so cute and I'm not really into gnomes, but they're also cute. And, but there's so many of them, like I wouldn't have a, a way to pick which one I would want to do, but I saw this one. I thought he's different. Um, and so, um, and you know, I don't have like a cover photo. This is just like, but. I thought he was cute. So <laughs> I got him and I mean, he's for sure not going to be finished this year. I'm probably only going to stitch on him for like this week. Um, and then he'll go 
into my my basket until next year but anyway so this is my beginning of my Hanukkah gnome just the be very top of his his little hat um so Laura and Jen it's because of you that I started a new chart like I needed a new chart in my life So, but yeah, I thought he was cute and I just appreciate that it's not the same old, same old. Yeah. So, oh, and this is cute, cute embroidery.com. C-U-T-E-B-R-O-I-D-E-R-Y.com. I think that that's the best picture of him. That's one thing I don't love about um, Etsy patterns is the other problem with this particular pattern is there's a lot of back stitching on it, you know, which I have no problem with the back stitching, but the way it's done is like it's done in color and I don't have really good access to a color printer. So I have to look at it on here to get the colors because you know, it, it that to me is a kind of a pain, but whatever, I'll deal with it. Okay, so that was my new start this year. Whips that I worked on um, since last week was a Zoom. Um, I worked on my country garden um, kind of canvas piece and did all of that. So I was going to try and get this done this year. I'm realizing, you know, as we get, we're in December and it's like time sticking by. I don't know that I'm going to have no time to get this done this year because it's just, it, it's slower than I thought. Um, like I could possibly work on it today when I'm playing D&D, but honestly, I think I'm going to crochet while I'm playing D&D. Um, if I need to do something during D and I think it's going to be working on my granny square afghan or something. Um, let's see what else did I work on this week. I worked on my pumpkin trio by Mill Hill. Still can't find the little frog. I tossed it on my desk somewhere. So that's going to require. Some uh, major searching. But I think I finished all the stitching. So I'm down to the beading. I started the beading with the, the purple bow. Before, but I know somebody I was watching somebody and they were talking about beading and having a trouble with uh, they were talking about doing a mill hill and that they were having a hard time um, threading the needle that was for the beads um, and I've said this before but in case you haven't heard it most beads you can you can fit most beads over 28, a size 28 needle. So um, not all, like occasionally I'll get a mill hill and it's just too tight and, and, but it's that particular bead. It's not like all of them. Um, so for the most part, when I'm beading, I just use a size 28. I don't, I have a bunch of beading needles, but I have a really hard time um, threading beading needles. Um, and, uh, even the ones that are supposed to be, you know, flexible and no, I, they're hard for me to do. But we're at twice size 28. I, work, I use them all the time. Um, 
and I don't have any problem threading those with a double strand. So I just use a size 28 needle for most of my beading um, and it works really well. Um, okay, I worked on. I worked on my prickly owl this week. This is my sort of friends project that I started with Julie Stitching the Cabin and the pattern was given to me by Don Fish, my friend from Arizona. Um, and I guess I could show you the picture, although I'm pretty close to where I don't need to. <laughs> This is a little dimensions kit. Um, I changed the fabric. Um, I almost always change, like if it comes with cream or white Ada, I almost always change it. Um, so I pulled out, I think the white Ada or cream Ada. I put it in my stash for dyeing. And then this actually was a piece of blue Ada that came with another project that I then um, dyed with a little bit of turquoise too to give it a little bit of modeling and so yeah I worked more on the green I was talking to Julie about this because there's two colors of green in here like the two main colors and for mine, they're so similar. Like, I guess it gives a little bit of depth. I mean, it does. I can kind of see a little bit of depth um, because of the, like, the shading. But hers are a lot different. Like, hers, it's much more obvious. And it's much more obvious in the picture. Like, you can see in the picture how, like, there's two different greens right here. Mine, they're so similar. It's like... The two, the two main greens are just so close. And I don't know if it's because, you know, if it's just this kit, I don't know if one of them's faded, if it's just a dye lot thing. But these are the two different ones. And can you see that there are two different ones? Yeah, that's how close they are. So, I mean, overall, I think it looks, it looks fine. It looks good, but it's kind of annoying to have to pay attention to the pattern when it doesn't really make that much difference. Okay, and then the last thing I worked on this week was my petals and caffeine or this mom the tart um, the tart was originally this home runs on cuddles and caffeine i've changed it to this mom and this is a gift for stacy my sister-in-law who is a big coffee drinker and i see and she's a homeschool mom, so you know, it all kind of fits. And I finished the cuddles and started on the and banner. This is fabric that was hand dyed by me. So. I started this a long time ago, but I'll be honest, I kind of slowed down on it because Stacy started stitching and like, you know, so she was doing all of the stuff that she wanted and she did a beautiful project for me though. And so now I feel, you know, I like, I do want to get this done and give it to her. Although I think that when I send it to her, it's just going to like stay in a box for a while because they kind of made a decision that the condo that they're in now, um, it's not going to be their forever home and they haven't really put anything up on the wall. Um, cause they're like saving all of their decor and 
all of the, you know, all of the special stuff, like the stuff she stitched, the stuff I've stitched, all that kind of stuff is going to go up when they find a house that they want to have forever. Um, okay, so that is, that's about it. Um, I don't have any haul or anything to show you today. I did order a few things on Black Friday. Um, 123 Stitch was having a fantastic sale on um, some fabric pieces. Like some of it was like $3 for, you know, like a decent sized piece of uh, Pictures Plus. And so I did get some fabric. Um, I got, you know, well, $3 pieces. I got, you know, six or seven pieces. Um, and then um, I found a chart that I think is going to be my new year new start. So I'm excited about that. It is a Riolis kit, big surprise there. Um, and I'll show it to you. I, I, it's supposed to come tomorrow, I think. So I'll be able to show stuff to you next week. Um, I also got a really nice little card from Debbie Sisk, a Thanksgiving card. She's um, She always makes these really cool stitched things. So it's like a quilted hand stitched, you know, postcard. Um, really cool. And she sent a couple of these to me and I really appreciated it. So, so neat to get those in the mail. Um, so plans, I mean, December is a busy month, not just for me, for everybody. Um, I'm trying to think of it positively and not as a stressor. Um, Hanukkah, as I said, starts Thursday. It seems like so early this year, um, which means I feel like I have to get everything going early. Um, but I've already sent, I sent a family gift to, um, Aaron and Stacy and the kids. They should actually be getting it today. Um, I told them when they get their packages from Amazon, just don't open them, just put them in the Hanukkah pile. Um, and, um, I decided to get them a family gift this year rather than trying to get something for each person. Um, I've in the past, I've gotten kind of like the same thing for each person. Anyway, I've gotten like pajamas for everybody or I've gotten, um, movie, you know, blankets to snuggle under while watching movies and I've gotten a different one for each person that, that fit them. So I have kind of stuck to a theme in the last couple of years anyway, just cause it's, it's too hard with five people. Um, especially three kids who are mercurial. Um, but this year, uh, just finance reasons and ease reasons and the fact that it has to be mailed to them and everything, I thought a family gift would be a better way to go. So I went ahead and did that and I actually got a little gift for my friend Tracy and her partner Jason and sent that. Um, and I told them they could open, they could save it for Christmas or they could open it and use it on Hanukkah because it's for me. Um, so they kind of know what it is, but they don't know what it is. Um, I found a company called Hunt Killer um, from watching YouTube, another like an artist uh, creator. And one of her sponsors was this Hunt a Killer. And um, it's pretty cool. It's not inexpensive, <laughs> but um, they were having a good Black Friday sale. So um, they have, you can order like a... It's so it's a murder mystery kind of thing and you get like all of the evidence and you get all of the stuff it's kind of like they're comparing it to like an escape room but you know in a box kind of thing um so you can get a um they have like a six month um mystery that every six months or I don't know. They have what they call seasons. So there's one that's available now and it's a six month box. So you get a box every month. Um, and then you can get one or you could get a year. So you'll get two seasons. Um, but they also have one-off games where it's like all in one and, um, um, they say it's like an hour or two of, play. Now I read a bunch of reviews. Some people who are like, do this a lot are like, Oh yeah, it took us an hour. Me and my partner it took us an hour. And other people are like, Oh, it took us four hours. So, you know, and it's something you can do by yourself or you can do it in a group. They don't recommend more than I think six people because it's just, it gets too convoluted having to, um, pass everything around, but they're, they're full of like 
you know, clues and, and there's puzzles and the, you know, so it's all this stuff to, to basically catch the killer, hunt the killer. Um, so anyway, they were having a really pretty good Black Friday sale. And so I was able to get uh, one of those for my friends. Um, I got one for myself as well. Um, so, which is fun because then, you know, if you don't mess up everything in the box, you can actually trade them. <laughs> you can send them off to somebody else. Um, because it's all, you know, mental, as long as you're not writing on the, the stuff that you get. Um, so yeah, so I thought it sounded really great. And um, so I got one for uh, Tracy and Jason. And I did tell them the company, but I didn't tell them which one they got so that they're not going to know until they get it. Um, which mystery. Um, but there's a bunch and um, it looks really fun. In fact, I was I was thinking about seeing if there was a way that I could kind of do it, you know, online with you guys, but um, I don't know what, I don't know how you would do that um, other than doing like a playthrough and yeah, I don't know that that would work. Um, and since I've not really done it before, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh, plans. So Hanukkah starts on Thursday. So I will be doing a video each night for those eight nights, plus my regular Sunday one. Um, and then, uh, as I said, we're going to have a Zoom on the 16th and a Zoom on New Year's Eve. I will be doing a whip parade sometime during um, the end last couple weeks of the year. And then I will do a finished parade and probably either film it and put it up on the first or film it prior and then put it up on the first. But that's what I've done the last couple years. I've done a finished parade to start the year. Um, and my light just went out again <laughs> and yeah oh and then of course i'm gonna try and get the little golden books finished and mailed out um i'm i'm working as hard as i can on those i know you know i, I should have known last year i i gave myself a year to do it but i should have known that i would end up doing being crazy the last like month um, because there were months that I didn't look at it, right? Um, so for those of you that are expecting those books, um, they are coming. You will get them. Um, thank you so much for being patient. Um, hopefully you'll love them when you get them. Um, and I'll probably be uh, uh, messaging messaging you soon on Instagram so that I can get you know your addresses and stuff, obviously, to nail them. But... Um, I think that that is about it for, for now. Um, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I need to get this started and uploading. Hopefully it'll upload easily. I doubt it's going to upload before my game starts, but we'll do what we can. And, um, I will see you as soon. I will see you sooner than normal because I will be here not here, I will be there in my little hallway lighting candles on Thursday night. And um, they, Flossicas may not be as elaborate as they were last year. Um, I'm just in a more subdued place, I think. And, um, but they'll still be nice. I will give you my, my little tidbits of info about Hanukkah and we'll light the candles and, um, and yeah, I, I don't know that anything else is going to happen other than that, but it should be fun regardless. So, um, until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.